In one of the outskirts of Seoul, there is a brick building and a fence. This is the former Seo Diamond Prison. After the Russo-Japanese War of 1894-1895, according to the signed Treaty of Shimonoseki, China ceded Taiwan to Japan and its influence in Korea. As a result of the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905, Korea finally came under Japanese rule. Seo Diamond Prison was built in 1908, specifically designed for Korean patriots advocating for the independence of their country from the Japanese military. Beginning Initially, everything was arranged here for the convenience of the guards and the ordeal for the prisoners. There were torture chambers and interrogation rooms. The prison was designed to hold 500 prisoners at a time. However, the number of prisoners as a rule reached 1,000 or more people. The Japanese did not consider the people of Korea to be their equals. Therefore, they were treated as second-class people. In this, Japan was not much different from Nazi Germany. The torture chambers were located in the basement so the screams of people being tortured could not be heard. All torture instruments and devices were presented here. Vice, tongues, wire cutters, knives, ropes, whips, shackles, racks, and much more. World War II With the outbreak of World War II, especially after Pearl Harbor, the Japanese attack on the U.S. naval base on December 7, 1941, and the outbreak of hostilities between the United States and Japan, Korean underground patriots began to hope for liberation from Japanese dominion. Fighters for Korean independence intensified their efforts. Acts of sabotage and even murder of Japanese military personnel and local collaborators became more frequent. Accordingly, the failures of the underground fighters became also more frequent, which means that the number of prisoners in Seadaiman increased. The procedure was similar to what happened in such institutions. Those who fell into the hands of the jailers were weighted, measured, photographed, special documents were filled out, the personal file of the arrested person was created, etc. At first, during the first interrogation, the Japanese carried out the so-called psychological pressure. That means they played the evil and good policeman. One investigator yelled at the prisoner and threatened him with all the punishments for him and his family. Then he was replaced by a kind investigator, who persuaded him, outlined all the advantages of cooperation with the occupation authorities, saying that otherwise he would not be able to help the poor fellow. If the accused of collaborating with underground fighters and partisans turned out to be psychologically stable and did not buy the bait of the gendarmes, then a torture chamber awaited them. Torture in prison any of the most sophisticated torture could be applied to the prisoner. Beating with whips or sticks, twisting of arms, squeezing of hands or fingers in a vice or pliers. A prisoner could be hung on a rack and left hanging there for several hours or even days. Particularly sophisticated cruelty was beating with a stick on the feet or soles of the feet or hands, inserting needles under the nails and pushing hard objects the size of a pencil into the nostrils. Also in the torture chambers, there were special cabinets in which the most unaccommodating were locked. The closets were crammed and a prisoner could spend several days in this position. Many could not stand it and went crazy or died. But these were not all the inventions of the executioners. There was also a box with spikes, something like a rabbit cage with sharp pins pierced inside. In such hellish conditions, the victim could remain for several days. Of course, not everyone could withstand such torment. Korean collaborators also took part in torture and interrogation, which is not surprising, as elsewhere and like all traitors to their people, they tried to curry favor with the Japanese masters and did not spare their fellow tribesmen. Those prisoners who did not confess and stood their ground to the end could be executed. Victims sentenced to death were most often hanged. They were shot less often. Japanese guards and executioners also loved to cut off heads. To remove a victim's head from his shoulders with one well-aimed and skillful blow of a saber was considered a special treat. The executioners did not differentiate between women and men. Everyone was tortured, humiliated, and executed equally, including minors if they were suspected of helping the resistance movement. One of the prisoners was Yu Guan San. On March 1, 1920, she gathered her fellow inmates and staged a protest within the prison walls. For this, she was placed in isolation. Japanese executioners tortured Korean patriot Yu Gun San, who was 18 years old, to death. The sadists applied most of the savage torture to her. The garrison of Angus surrendered after a short battle. Although there was some problem with the port of Changjing, a hot battle took place there for almost two days. 
On August 15, the Japanese emperor issued an appeal for surrender. However, individual Japanese units continued to resist even until the 20th of August. The Americans landed at the South Korean port of Incheon on August 8 without encountering serious resistance. Units of the Red Army went south of Seoul, going deeper to the south. However, Soviet troops did not enter the city itself so as not to violate the preliminary agreement with the Americans reached in Yalta and delimiting Korea into Soviet and American zones of responsibility along the 38th parallel. In Seoul, in the site of a former prisoner, a museum was created in memory of the victims of the Japanese occupation and the freedom fighters of the peninsula. In total, during the existence of the prison, 40,000 people visited it. Data on those killed and executed vary. They give different numbers, from 400 to 1,000 people.